कॉल की देखो بعد <تصفيق> We give thanks and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every blessing he has blessed us with. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, having to be joining and congregating in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where this is one of the circle that is found uh, very few times in a society. And it is a gathering where the angels and they always roam around to find out where are the gathering in which the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned. And by the time they find this, they call the other angels to come and protect this gathering. And then when we get up before we leave, the angel says, Stand up and leave. For verily Allah has changed your bad deeds into good deeds. This is what happens when you come and attend the circle of a dhikr Dhikr means whenever the, the name of Allah Azza wa are being mentioned, like this one. We want to enter into the value that we want to speak about from Riyadh al-Saliheen, what we've been doing, alhamdulillah. We have been speaking about al-ikhlas, al-sabr, muraqabah, muhasabah, and we've been speaking about different uh, moral values and qualities and attributes that pertain to a Muslim from the book of Riyadh al-Salihin. Today, if anyone are following from the home, we're doing page number 94, which is the Bab of Tawakkal ala Allah. Today, today, we sit down and we hold our head and we claim that we are into depression. Nowadays, we feed stress. We feed and we feed the stress until we fall into something called depression, though I don't believe in it. We all have to stress in life. If every, anyone comes to you and say, you should not be stressing, I say, yeah, what are you talking about? Everyone has to stress in life. You especially as a man. As a man, when you wake up in the morning, you've got stress on your head, yes or no? Because you need to go to work. A mother, when she wakes up in the morning, she got stress on her head. She needs to prepare the pack lunch. She needs to prepare food. She needs to make sure that the house is ready to be called at home. And everyone has stress in life. Even a child growing up, he's got stress. He's got examination coming up. I mean, he wants to eat something, but his parents didn't want to give it to him. He falls into some kind of a stress. But the thing is, when you accumulate stress and then you start to feed stress, you get it out of control and you have called it a name, depression. Which I personally believe that in the life of a Muslim, we shouldn't have nothing called depression. Because it's very, very hard for me to believe that if you are feeling from depression and you have a couple of pills, you should be okay. This is what they do, yes sir. Or I need to go to a psychologist. They can feel it from depression. You go there, they give you some pills and then you feel good. You never feel good. 
many some people believe in it. And I personally believe in the Muslim. We shouldn't even get ourselves to that term depression in life because we have a tool. We have a weapon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Today, you find Muslims walking on the face of the earth smiling. Today, you find people losing their health, their wealth, their loved one into poverty, into fear, and they have a smile on their face. It's because they have a value, a quality that is instilled in them from the Tawheed of Allah, which is called at tawakkil al Allah. Is that they rely upon Allah, they put their reliance upon Allah, they depend upon Allah. Everything goes back to Allah. Nothing shall happen except by the will of Allah. For Wallahi, if you put this into your life as a Muslim, you will not fall into any kind of so-called depression what people talk about. Because you already know whatever thing that did not go my way, it's from who? From Allah. If I wanted something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted something else for me because he knows the future. There's no point you sit down here and hold your head and be stressed out about the future when the future is already in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jalla. What you're supposed to do, well, unfortunately, some people, they hold their head in stress of what has happened in the past. Shaitan. Whatever has happened in the past, can you change it? It's gone, it's gone. You can't change nothing what has happened in the past, but what you can do is to take a lesson and better yourself today so it reflects in you tomorrow. This is us as Muslims. Take a lesson what has happened yesterday. Make yourself a better person today and allow that person and value to reflect on tomorrow. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah, wal tanzul nafsum ma qaddamat lighad. Have the consciousness of Allah, the fear and the piety and the love of Allah, and set yourself and what you have set for your hand tomorrow which means literally what you have planned for tomorrow. Have the fear of Allah in that regard. Allah didn't ask you to stress out. Allah didn't ask you to sit down there and cry what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what you need to do is to know how to put that trust in Allah the Almighty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And whoever put their trust in Allah Azza wa Jal it is sufficient for them. Allah it is sufficient. Sufficient means that the result that you're going to get is going to be something unexpected. Because sometimes because of how weak you are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your weakness and suddenly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open your door. Something out of expectation. Yes or no? You just told me this. You're happy what happened? Yes or no? He just came and told me good news maybe. He felt it's a good news. Stressing out for years. He just came and told me something. Allah opened a way. I told him be patient. It's from Allah Azza wa Jalla. You might be happy, you might not be happy, but it's from Allah. He's got a smile on his face. May Allah make you barakah into that. Because the more you put your trust in Allah, Allah is going to show you that He is the one who has actually removed you from that, from that difficulty. From Allah. If Ibrahim والسلام, would not have put his trust in Allah, he would have burned into the fire. 
Had Musa alayhi salatu wasalam didn't put his trust in Allah azza wa jal, he would have drowned in the sea. Had Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam wouldn't have put his trust in Allah, he would have stayed in the belly of the whale until Yawm al-Qiyamah. How did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi sallam when he put his trust in Allah, Allah would not have opened his way to Medina. Look, now we go back to Tawheed. The problem what happened nowadays is, again, like I mentioned, stress out there for each and every person in this world. How we control stress and how we do not allow stress to control us is from our tawakkal on Allah. Simple. Allah, look at the brothers and sisters in Palestine today. All the clip that we have found, or what we have seen, I mean, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, nowadays the reason we're able to see what's really going on there is because of social media. Yes, or no? Back in the days and all these kinds of war and oppression that used to happen in all this time in Iraq and Palestine and all this, we never used to get the true image. Yes, or no? Whatever BBC and CNN was giving to us, we used to believe. But now, no. We can see what's going on in the Maidan. Has anyone over there, when they are burying their husbands or carrying the janada of the children or kissing the children for the last time, burying the five, six children that I just passed away right now, subhanAllah, has any of them raise their hand to Allah and say, Ya Allah, why me? Why did it happen to me? It's because they know the special patience that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given these people cannot be compared to us. So therefore, they always put their trust in Allah. Khalas, you're leaving us, we're going to meet in Jannah. Tawakkal on Allah. Go see them. They could be the most happiest person now. When you look at them, you feel sorry for them. But when they sit down, they have they put the trust on Allah Azza wa Jal, that we are the chosen one. Yes or no? When they look at us, they'll be like, you guys are actually in an open air prison. They will look at us in a different lens. We look at them in a different lens. They were like, subhanAllah, our door of Jannah is opened. And for us, we need to strive day and night for that to be opened. We look at them with a heart of sorrow. And they may look at us with a, so with a heart of contentment. Because for them, they're ready to meet Allah subhanahu. Why? Because they have the reliance upon Allah azza wa jal that has made them a person that they walk on the face of the earth with a smile on their face. And they're proud of whom they are as the Muslim in regards to the identity. This is how we're supposed to be. When the non-Muslim, when the non-Muslim out there, they sit down, they start stressing out. They tend to put 100% their efforts and they go and knock at the door of people. Either they fail or they pass. At the end of the day, they bring back the result to themselves. Either they are proud of themselves or they feel that they are a fail failure. But us as Muslims, we make our efforts in regards to whatever happened in this dunya, to your work, to your marriage, to your terbiya, to your business, to your education, regardless of what you're doing in this dunya, you put your effort and you put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, trust me, you will sit back. You will do your effort as much as you can and you will relax because it is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَنَ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Hasbu over here means sufficient. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. How many times we use we use this word? Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbun Allah. Allah is sufficient for us. Allah is sufficient for us. Subhanallah. Have we actually used that term in a way like the Prophet has used? Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam, he used that. When he was thrown, when he was thrown in the in the in the fire, when he was thrown in the fire, he read the dua. 
the one that you read, Hasbun Allah wa Ni'mal Wakil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say to the fire? Qul ya naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Oh fire, who created the fire? Allah. He can do whatever he wants. Be a place of cool and tranquility for Ibrahim. Musa alayhi salatu salam, he went, he took the Bani Israel in the night. He wanted to bring them back to Palestine to where they belonged. And guess what? When he was going, Fir'aun and his jesh came to know. He started chasing them. By the time they get in front of the sea, on the right side mountains, the left side mountains, behind them is the army of Fir'aun. Then Israel, you know, they had the, they liked to complain. That was them. Put the blame on someone else. Ya Musa, inna na mudrakoon, khalas. Khalas, we're done. What do you make us do? What did Musa Ali Salaam said? Kalla, inna ma'i rabbi sayyidi. La, la, la. Kalla, nay. Inna ma'i rabbi sayyidi. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to show me a way. And this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to hit the, the sea and the sea was open in the wind. When did this happen? When he put his tawakkal upon Allah Azza wa Jal. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned, had Yunus not made the dua, وَذَنُّونَ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا فَظَنَّ أَلَّا النَّقَدِرَ عَلَيْهِ فَنَادَ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ أَلَّا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجْلِيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمِّ Had Yunus alayhi salatu was salam not put his trust upon Allah azza wa jal, he would have stayed in the belly of the whale until yom al-qiyamah, as mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 13 years had he ever raised his hand or complained to anyone why is this happening to me? He put his trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. He traveled from Mecca to Medina when he was in the cave of Thor. When they were coming if they were to look down at their feet the Quraysh they would have seen the Prophet sallam and his sahib Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. Abu Bakr said, Ya Rasulullah, if they look down, they're going to see us. La tahzin, inna Allah ma'ana. Don't worry, who's with us? Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah ta'alithuhuma. Allah Azza wa Jal, the third one. And they never seen. This is the tawakkah that we need to put in Allah Azza wa Jal. Haqqa tawakkuli. One of the beautiful hadith, I just mentioned in the other message before coming. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are men and women who will enter Jannah whose hearts are like the heart of the birds and they will enter Jannah. There are men and women whose hearts are like the af'idat al-tayr. They are like the hearts of the birds. And these people shall enter Jannah. How are the hearts of the birds? We've never seen the heart of the birds. We don't even know how the heart of the birds look like, or we don't even, we don't even know. What did that mean? And that's mentioned in the Ayat al-Saliheen. The heart of the birds is mentioned in another hadith. Where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, مَنْ تَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّنِهِ لَيَرْزُقَنَّهُ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْرِ Whoever put their trust in Allah Azza wa Jal in a proper trust, you don't trust Allah that you keep on complaining. You don't trust, you don't put your trust in Allah and then you're not working. I mean, alhamdulillah for our Imam and Shaykh for for him to be here today in the Mu'addin, the half of the Qur'an, well, they never got wahi. They made an effort to memorize the Qur'an. You became an engineer, a doctor, 
and wh whoever you are, you made an effort for you to reach that, and then you put your trust in Allah, and you could see the result. Man tawakkala ala Allah haqqa tawakkuli. Whoever puts his trust in Allah, and a true trust, which means that they set out, and they put an effort, and then they put the trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. They got an interview, ready. And whatever happened after, خلص. it's okay. I got it, alhamdulillah, I didn't get it, khair. Allah Azza wa has chosen something better for me. I wanted to marry that girl, it didn't happen, khair, alhamdulillah. I wanted to migrate to that place, I wanted to take that job, I wanted to buy this car, it didn't happen, khair, alhamdulillah. This is what makes a Muslim this is what makes a Muslim feel good. This is what makes us differ from the, from the non-Muslims out there. It's the tawheed that you have in your heart. Oh, everything, what happened, your heart is attached to Allah Azza wa Jal. And Nabi Sallallahu mentioned, whoever have a proper tawakkal upon Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah will provide for him the same way he provides the birds. The birds in the morning, they set out, they leave their nest, empty stomach. And they go out to seek provision. Allah give them their provision and they come back to the nest with full stomach and with food for the babies. Did the bird stay in the nest? The big bird, the mother, did she stay in the nest to get provision? No, he set out. And Allah gave the bird the provision and he came back full stomach and that happened every day. Every day. If ever we as Muslims, we put our trust just like the bird, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put us in Jannah. Simple as that. Hadith in Sahih. Where are we? Why do sometimes when things happen that may not be in our hand, we start to panic? Don't panic. It's in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal. Wallahi, you could see your, your Iman trembles and shakes when the pandemic was happening. Yes, sir. It's the first time it happened. We didn't know what to do. We could get a call tomorrow. Something may happen to me. Something may happen to my family. Death on a rise. At that time, our tawakkal on Allah grew. And for some people, the tawakkal on Allah was being shown to them how weak it was. Wallahi. The only thing we could do was to surrender, yes or no? Khalas. If I'm getting some kind of COVID, I surrender to Allah. Whatever happened, happens. Now you put your trust in Allah. Because you know you're into that situation. But you don't need to wait to get to, get to that situation. Because if you train yourself, if you train yourself to rely upon Allah, any situation happen, trust me, you'll be the most bravest of person to face any situation. If you have to work it upon Allah. You'll be able to face your enemy. You'll be able to face the world out there. You'll be able to face people who are scared of Dajjal. Yes, we're scared of Dajjal. It's okay. Because you're taking your precaution. You're making your salawat. You're asking Allah Azza to save you from a Dajjal. You're reading your Surah Al-Kahab every Friday. Why do you have to be, put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal? This is something that we need to actually have to root in our heart. How do we put our trust in Allah? And how do we teach our children to put their trust in Allah, especially when it comes to an exam? Their trust in Allah Azza wa Jal has to be very, very important. Today, we are working. And we work. The only thing we have in our mind is that we fear that we might get sacked. 
and terminate it. That's in our mind. Yeah, we need to have this stress. We need to have this kind of concern. Or, or else we'll never perform. But how many people have already thought it in that way? I don't need to fear. I'm going to work the best I can. I signed a contract and I'm going to work as for what I agreed in the contract. Yes or no? From eight till five. Whatever. And I'm going to do my best what I've been asked to do while signing this contract. Whatever happened is in the hand of Allah. Whatever happened in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal. If they close the door on your face, Allah Al-Fatih will open double doors for you. People have forgotten that the job that they have got now is from who? It's from Allah. Is it permanent? It's not permanent. Allah knows you're going to be in this job for 10 years. One extra day won't be good for you and your deen, in your dunya. Allah knows when is the right time for you to leave that work. Don't sit down and cry while you've been terminated or expelled or, uh, or sacked, whatever. Khalas. It happened. Tawakkal ala Allah. Allah al fatah Before they close the door, Allah has already opened doors for you. It's just a matter of, of, for, of you, of yourself to be patient. And it happened to everyone. May Allah save us. But the thing is, what we need to know is, yes, it's okay. I'm here to do my job supposed to be done. But if ever something happened, now qaddar Allah, khalas. It's okay. Allah is going to open another way. Because that job was given to me from Allah. It was written for me to be there for five years. And another job I'm going to go, Allah has written for me to be there. I don't know. Another five years. Do I know? I don't know. I don't even know I'm going to eat for dinner. I don't even know I'm going to have tomorrow for breakfast. It's all in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal. So our, what we have to do, all what we have to do, brothers, is that we need to put our efforts and put our trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. In regards to our children, we sit down, we hold our head. Sheikh, I don't know what to do. My child is going astray. I don't know what to do. My child is not praying. She's refusing to wear hijab. She's smoking. He's taking drugs. He's taking girlfriends. What are you going to do? Are you the one who can open the heart of someone and put guidance? In regards to guidance, my brothers, remember it's not in your hand. By the time you think guidance is in your hand, you failed. Guidance is in the hand of Allah. Upon you is to do a good tarbiyah for your children. Upon you is to be a good father and a good mother so that you can actually be a mirror for your children. To open their heart and put hidayah, it's not your job. So when you have this kind of thoughts, you already know. My job for them to be good is for me to be good first. Because Allah has spoken to me as a father and a mother first. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. First you have taqwa. First you put the sunnah in your life. First, you have someone, you're wearing the hijab, you're praying, you're having good moral. And then you will see this, reflect on your children. If you're not having it, don't call the sheikh and complain, my children is doing one, two, three, four. When you yourself, for Salat al-Fajr, you're not waking up. When you yourself, you're thinking when you're going to go 60 years old, now you're going to grow your beard, you're going to have your hijab. Don't blame anyone. But the hidayah, Come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What you do is, any kind of little thing happen, you have done your best. It didn't happen, you don't need to stress out. You don't need to go out in the 
feel that if you're going to go out in the society, people are going to look down upon you. Abadan. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not guide the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who do you think you can actually guide your family? This is something you need to understand. The hidayah in the hand of Allah azza wa jal. But we need to understand our tawakkal upon Allah azza wa that he does everything at the right time. The how and the why and the what and the where that belong to Allah. Upon you is make an effort. Upon you is to put your reliance upon Allah azza wa jal, and you will see a different person. Walking on the street, walking in the corridor, a smile on your face. You got one dirham only in your pocket, you're walking outside, you get a smile on your face. Because you could be richer than someone who has millions in the bank account. Because what you have, they may not have. The best blessing and the richest of people are those who have a soul with tranquility. I go to bed, no stress. I wake up in the morning, I haven't taken the rights of anyone. I know I can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anytime tomorrow. These are the people that are the happiest. For therefore, do not accumulate stress. Stress over stress over stress, where you feel you, have, you are drowning into stress, and then you call it you are depressed. And then you go and look for those counselors, Oh, a counselor could be okay. They're going to counsel you. But to go and get some pills in order just for you to sleep, just to forget, this will not make you a better person. I personally believe, personally believe or I might be wrong, that many people who have made some counseling towards, they said they went to depression. They've gone to so-and-so taking pills, but it's not working. I said, my brother, the ilaj, the shifa is there in the Quran. Al-Shifa and Ilaj are two, two different things. Al-Shifa is 100% cure. Maybe now or tomorrow. The Shifa that you get in the Quran is physical Shifa, spiritual Shifa, mental, psychological Shifa. Everything is there in the Quran. Why do you leave that remedy and you go somewhere else? Atawakkal ala Allah is the first and foremost remedy to avoid depression. And I will end with a hadith. I'll end with a hadith where one day when the Prophet Muhammad was taken to Isra al Mi'raj, he saw the Prophet and the messengers. He was made to see them. He saw some prophets with no followers. He saw some prophets with one or two or three followers. And then he saw someone with loads of followers. He thought that was him. He said, who is this? That's Musa. Musa had loads of followers. Bani Israel, yes or no? Well, he took them from Fir'aun and brought them to Philistine and they... Over there, there were the progeny of Suleiman, Wadawood, Uzair, Harun. Big, big Ummah. And then it was said to him, look over there on the other side. He saw a biggest of Ummah. And it was said to him, that's your Ummah. The Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, biggest of Ummah. And then to said to him, 70,000 of your ummah will enter Jannah without punishment and without judgment. 70,000 of 70,000 people of my ummah will enter Jannah without punishment and without Jannah. They wake up from their qabr on Yawm Al-Qiyamah straight to Jannah. May Allah make us among them. The Nabi Sallallahu he got up he, in the morning, he told this to the Sahaba one day, and then he got up, he went into his house. 
So the Sahaba was disputing and discussing among themselves, who are those 70 people? Who are they? Some of them said, they are the people who are born Muslim. Some of them said, there are those who fought in the, maybe they fought in the battle. Some of them said that there are those who have never associated shirk partners with Allah Azza wa Jal. We don't know. But it came like a roar of a voice outside the house of the Prophet. He came out and asked them, why are you talking loudly for? What's going on? What are you guys discussing for? Say, Ya Rasulullah, we're discussing about who are those 70,000 people. He said, there are those people who do not ask others to make ruqya upon them. There are those people who do not believe in superstition. And there are those people who put their trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. There are those people who they don't ask others to read upon them. And I will emphasize upon this one. Making ruqya is something that the Prophet Muhammad did on himself. And making ruqya, like how we mentioned, the Quran is shifa, yes or no? We may be sick, and our children may be sick, and people around can be sick. And if ever you feel that you are possessed by jinn, or afflicted by evil eye, or afflicted by jealousy, you will feel it. Your lives change a little bit. You and your family, you and your wife, you and your job, all this stuff does happen. The best one to give you the cue is yourself. And Nabi Sallallahu he used to read dua when he used to be sick. But when the two surah, Al-Falaq and Al-Nas was revealed, he used to read that as a ruqya on himself. Ruqya means you read on yourself with an intention of shifa and protection. All right? So scholars, scholars, the ulama, they define it in a very uh, detailed manner so people can understand it well. It is preferable for you to do ruqya on yourself. It has more effect. You read the three qul, al-fatiha, ayat al-kursi, the last two verses of, of al-baqarah. You read on yourself, you blow on yourself, you blow on water, you drink, you blow on water, you pour on yourself. It has big effect. If you feel that you have some gene possession, you crush seven dry leaves of uh, cedar, you put in water, crush, and then you uh, bath yourself with it. Or you buy now the powder, you put one teaspoon, you stir it, you put on yourself, these remove gene from yourself. You do that on your own. That's permissible. If you are able to do it on your own, but you want someone else to do it, this is something highly dislike. Highly dislike. But if ever you want someone to read on you because you know they are more knowledgeable, they are experienced, it is okay. Because you feel that after you've read, it's not really working properly. You can ask someone to read it, no problem. But the best way of making a ruqya is your own. You read on your own, your children is sick, you read, you blow on them, you read on your own, you blow on yourself, this is permissible. But just straight away to go and call Iraqi to come without you yourself trying it, this is highly disliked, as mentioned by some scholars, but no one has said it is haram, alhamdulillah. And I know this is something that people look for nowadays. Number two, there are those people who they do not believe in superstition. Anything bad happen, they have the concept of saying, oh, I touch wood. You know, touching wood, they touch wood. Oh, if they go outside, 
a bird poo on themselves, they say that's good luck. Or they go outside, uh, a cat pass by them, cross their road, they'll be like, oopsie, that is bad luck. It's wearing talismans, amulets, ta'wid, all these, all these are superstition. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and he broke all these kind of tiara, all these kind of superstition. We don't believe in superstition. We believe that whatever happened, happened by the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the third one, those who will enter Jannah without punishment and without judgment are those people who put their trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone. Those who put their trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone and they are the people who will enter Jannah bi ibn Allah Ta'ala bila hisab wala adab. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make us among them. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the same way he has gathered us here May Allah gather us under the shade of his throne and give us the shafa'a of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to drink from his pond. How the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on Yawm al-Qiyamah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta staghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. If anyone has any question, they can ask me bi'idhna ta'ala. Let me just check first from online. If you are looking to avoid pregnancy and being told you